This video is about E. coli and the LAC operon, which kind of falls under biochemistry general principle area. So let's get to the question right away. So the question says that E. coli are grown on a medium containing lactose. Once glucose is added to the medium, the bacteria stops fermenting lactose. Which of the following best explains the observed effect? Now, what are the choices? Repressor protein is bound to the operator. Repressor protein is bound to the promoter. Repressor protein is bound to glucose. Glucose is bound to promoter. Cellular level of CMP is low. So before we kind of discuss the option, let's look at how the whole LAC operon and how uh, E. coli really um, works when there is glucose present and when there is lactose present. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail because I think for this particular question too much detail about the lac operon is unnecessary but I'll say enough so that the question can be understood and the topic can be quite thoroughly understood. Now this is my lac gene okay and sorry this is my lac gene the, the only this part so this would be my lac gene the P stands for promoter, O stands for operator, Z, Y, and A, these three are structural, structural genes. Now what happens when there is lactose? When there is lactose, what happens is a repressor is always bound to the operator. Okay, see, remember how one of the options was that the repressor was bound to the operator? A repressor is always bound to the operator in the absence of lactose. But whenever we have a lactose present, what happens is imagine that these are our lactose in the medium. The lactose is going to come and bind to this repressor. Okay, this is going to lead to a conformational change of our repressor and the repressor loses its ability to bind to our operator anymore okay so it's kind of repressor are going to be floating around it will not be able to bind to our operator as a result our operator is now free to do its job when our operator is free to do the job the RNA polymerase is going to come and bind to the promoter and it's going to start making um, proteins from our uh, bacterial genetic material. Now this only happens when there is lactose. In the absence of lactose, imagine that there is no lactose present, what's going to happen to a rep repressor? A repressor is going to be just bound to our operator like so. Okay, The repressor is going to be bound to the operator and it will inhibit the binding of the RNA polymerase to the promoter region. So we will not be able to make the structural genes into proteins, which is the ZYNA, is not going to give rise to the proteins or the enzymes which is necessary to break down um, lactose. So in this question, what happened? Initially, we had lactose. And when we had it lactose initially, the lactose came and bound to the repressor. The repressor was removed. RNA polymerase came and bind to the op promoter region. There was a synthesis of the three different structural genes into proteins, which gave rise to enzymes. And those enzymes could break down our lactose into uh, glucose and galactose. But when we added uh, glucose, okay, now we added glucose to the system. Why does the, the repressor stop working? Because E. coli has a very sophisticated DNA. It, only, it is only triggering the, the, the synthesis of these structural genes uh, into proteins when there is lactose present. It's like I'm going to invest more men in a certain job only when I need it. If I don't need them, I'm going to send them home. I don't need them, right? You know, that's just, it's just being more efficient. So LAC operon or the LAC gene is very, very efficient in that sense, uh, which is present in E. coli. So when we have glucose, glucose is easy to break. It's not like lactose. You don't need those additional guys to come and break down uh, glucose like you need it in a lactose. So what happens is when, when you add glucose to the medium 
and there is no lactose to come and bind to the repressor, uh, the repressor keeps on bound to the operator. And as a result, the lac gene is not, is, is not stimulated. Only glucose is broken down to give energy. Okay, so that's, that's the whole scenario of this. Now let's go back to our question and kind of see if it makes sense now. So in this question, it says that um, which, of the following best, which of the following best explains the observed effect? Okay, so E. coli are grown on a medium containing lactose. So initially we had lactose. Once glucose is added to the medium, the bacteria stops fermenting lactose, which makes sense. It does not stimulate the lac gene. Which of the following best explains the observed effect? Repressor protein is bound to the operator. First of all, we know that the repressor protein is bound to the operator. Okay, so A could be a possible answer. Repressor protein bound to the promoter? No, it's not even a possibility because the repressor doesn't bind to the promoter. Repressor protein bound to the glucose, that's not also an option. Uh, glucose is bound to the promoter, also that's just ridiculous, it's just thrown out there, it doesn't make sense. And cellular level of CAMP is low. Now we do have to talk about choice E a little bit. So the one thing that also happens when um, there is glucose which I haven't talked about it yet when one thing that also happens with glucose presence or the absence of lactose and the presence of glucose what happens is that glucose is going to inhibit adenylate cyclase okay now inhibition of adenylate cyclase is going to drop the level of CAMP we know from the second messenger that how that happens right now when CAMP is going to drop CAMP so what does how does CAMP um, kind of takes part in this whole process. What CAMP, the presence of CAMP happens is CAMP comes and binds to a little pocket here, a little pocket here, this is called a capsite, okay? The CAMP comes and binds to the capsite and it forms a, C, a cap a CAMP complex, okay? When there's a cap CAMP complex, it, this is going to start off uh, the synthesis of the protein. So when this is going to happen, um, that's when the lac operon is going to be stimulated and it's going to make more proteins, which is going to break down lactose. Now, when there is presence, present, I told you what glucose does. Uh, I, I told you what lactose does. I didn't really say what glucose does. Glucose is going to inhibit adenylate cyclase. Inhibition of adenylate cyclase is going to also inhibit CAMP. Inhibition of CAMP will not allow us to make the CAMP um, capsite complex so this is also going to drop and we are not going to have production of different proteins in our lac operon. As a result um, the, the lac gene is not going to be stimulated. Now when we initially look at the question it seemed like A was a viable answer but to be quite honest um, cellular level of CMP has a greater effect which is really the best explanation for the observed effect that really drops um, the stimulation of lactose repressor protein is bound to the operator yes that does not allow lactose from being um, being made but the main effect or oh, to inhibit lactose fermentation is going to be the low level of CMP and not repressor protein bound to the operator. So I know that initially when we talked about it, it it just makes sense that you know repressor bound to the operator if it keeps if if it just keeps on binding to it, it will not allow. But the bigger effect is going to be the capsite CMP complex, which is not going to allow lactose. Um, lac operon or lac gene to make the structural proteins which is necessary for breaking down lactose.